Hi everyone, Jeff here. After we shot the giant Diablo pellets backwards and they worked so well, viewers demanded to see how solid Diablo pellets would behave in a supersonic and even a subsonic environment. A viewer named David stepped up to the plate and cast us a whole bunch of these 69 caliber slugs. Being solid, they are now very heavy, weighing in at just under 40 grams each. And that's 82 times the weight of these Crossman Destroyer pellets. To make these giant Diablo shaped pellets, David used a Svarog mold made in Russia. What's interesting about this mold is it comes with four different size pins. The center pins are that allow you to change the weight of the pellets that you're casting. And I think what David did was he modified one of these pins, just kind of chopped off the tip to give us a completely solid pellet. Now one thing we have to consider is the balance of the pellet. This is a normal pellet with the hollow skirt and as you can see the center of gravity is just ahead of the center line of the pellet. With the solid pellet, the center of gravity is now shifted behind the center line. It'll be interesting to see how that affects the flight. Now these were loaded into these shot cups, essentially making them a sabo round. Some of them are loaded forwards, some of them backwards, and we adjusted the powder load so we can have some that are traveling at subsonic velocities and others at supersonic velocities. And before I forget, I want to acknowledge and give a shout out to all our channel members. Becoming a channel member is a way to support our channel and not have to use Patreon. We really thank you for your support. Now let's get out there and test these monsters out and see how they perform. You're watching Tau Flater Mouse. <laughs> All right, Tau Flater crew. We're going to try these uh, Diablo pellets, solid base. Uh, we're going to shoot the forward facing ones first. We've got a little drop of vape juice on there to see if we can get some happy trails. And then, then we'll try the then we'll, then we'll subsonic try this. backwards ones. We'll this is all backwards. out of smoothbore, so we're not having any. These are a, if they're naturally aerodynamic without spin. Yeah. Okay, sounds Sound good. <laughs> still ready? I'm still ready. Whew. No rating. Okay, let's take a look at the Kronos high-speed camera footage. We can see a textbook launch there. Good release from the wad. And that solid Diablo slug is as steady as a rock. Very accurate shot. Dead nuts right in the sticker there. And this slug was probably traveling between 7 to 800 feet per second. Definitely subsonic and very stable at those speeds. Greg brought out some soda cans for us to shoot. Real soda, just like Hitchcock. Yeah, that's Coke Zero. That's not real soda. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. And before anybody comments, kids in Africa would not drink that. It's been sitting in an ice chest. <laughs> yeah, it creates poison. <laughs> yeah, it's been in there since uh, July, sitting in its own stew, so they yeah. are very nasty. Okay, uh, we're rolling, and I'm ready. Center bottom row, right? Center bottom row. Oh, 785. We're definitely subsonic. That's almost below sonic. All right, launch number two of our forward facing solid Diablo slug. Again, very steady and very accurate. He was aiming at that middle bottom row there. Okay, now backwards facing pellet with vape juice. I don't know if the vape juice is doing anything or not, but it's hard to tell on the little screen. But All right. what are you going to aim for the the bottle of whatever that is? Gonna, yeah, that. Uh, I, I told him it was iced tea, but that's just so he would shoot it and not be worried about the spray. <laughs> don't let the spray get on you. <laughs> okay, I, I'm ready whenever you are. All right, T, here we go. Oh, wow. Missed. 811. Still subsonic. Yellow mist. Good name for Ooh. a uh, for a band. Well, we have a really nice looking launch. Good expansion of the pedals of the shot cup. But despite all that, the pellet did a 180. Still accurate. 
but it was not stable. Let's try another one and see if this trend continues. Okay, this is our last subsonic. Last one was 811 feet per second. Now we'll zoom in a little bit with the camera to get a closer look at the impact. Okay, I'm ready. Ooh, I saw that. Uh, that one said 471. I don't know. Now sometimes we get some oddball chronograph readings, and that one did not seem right. But as you can see, this backwards flying solid Diablo slug flying at subsonic speeds was stable this time. Let's move on to our next test using the shells loaded for supersonic speeds. Okay, now we're going supersonic. Well, that's a—I believe that's a forward-facing one. Yes. See how that behaves. I'll, I'll keep an eye on the chronograph and. Uh, Whoa. Ten ninety-eight. Oh, that's a pretty good kick on that. Is that, one. Is that supersonic? Ten ninety-eight? Because it's like ten. Well, this is more of a transonic velocity than a supersonic or subsonic. Now again, we had a good release from the wad, and we have a good stable flying slug. And as you can see, we have considerably more energy transfer of the ju water jug than we saw with the subsonic impact. Okay, forward facing vape juice, supersonic. At the lead plate, where are you, where are you, where are you going to be aiming at? I'm going to try to put it between those two divots in there. Okay. I am ready. 9.99. Well, again, we're in that transonic envelope, but this one did not fly straight at all. It flew sideways. Now, I could have just omitted this clip, and you would have thought that we were geniuses and everything, but I'd like to show all the mistakes and things that can happen. Okay, backwards facing pellet. We got to save one for a long range shot just to, uh, just to get it. Okay, where are you going to be aiming? Uh, we're going to go to the lower clear area. Okay, anywhere in there will be good. Backwards, hit it. 605, that ain't right. Well, in retrospect, it, it could have been going 605 feet per second. But again, we have a tumbling slug, no stability. I'll explain later on why we're getting these wonky readings and we're not hitting that target velocity of around 1200 feet per second. What's the results there? That was our first shot, right? Yeah, these two were already here. Yep. There's our first shot. Looked like it might have hit sideways. And second shot was definitely was tumbling. Yeah, it, it, I could see on the high speed, it was just, it, it might have done 10 flips on the way there. In the backside. Almost Whoa. went through. That, and that's the 25 pound block. That's impressive. That's <laughs> about an inch and three eighths of lead. That's a lot of, a lot of lead being thrown. It wasn't though. It wasn't high velocity. That much energy does a lot of damage. You can feel it in the recoil. That's yeah. A good stout recoil. Yeah. Okay. Let's All find right. one more target. Target has moved back to about 25 yards. That's actual yards. We're gonna fire the last backwards-facing one. If you could hit that, I'll be very surprised. I'll trust the way that last one was tumbling. I'm surprised he hit anything. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. You got it. In this test, we went back to the mineral oil. The vape juice kind of beaded up and didn't stick very well to the slug. But we can see a nice little 
vapor trail on this shot. The slug was mostly stable and just near the end it looked like it was yawing a little bit, but still you can't argue with the accuracy. I was quite surprised he hit the can. Now a little simplified shadow graph videography. Okay, what round do you have in there? Uh, it's one of those uh, Fiocchi's. <clears throat> Fiocchi, Fiocchi. <laughs> We'll see it's, if we get a shadow graph imagery. It's a one ounce uh, low velocity slug, so we're running uh, 1150 feet per second. So it's still supersonic. Just barely. But the slower, the better chance we have of capturing it with our chronos. We're filming at 21,000 frames a second. Okay, uh, I'm ready. Okay, here we go. Now bear in mind this is not true shadow graph videography, but it does show us a lot of stuff that would normally be invisible if we just filmed the actual slug flying through the air. Bear in mind we've never filmed this way before and this is really impromptu, but I wanted to try it. We just flipped up the table and started shooting. But that's what a factory loaded slug looks like. Okay, now we have a, a low velocity, this should be subsonic. Uh, forward-facing pellet. It's got. I drill a little cavity in there to hold a, like a droplet of vape juice, that uh, vegetable glycerin that you gave me. Mm-hmm. And he's gonna add a little drop. I think the bee wants to hit on the vape juice. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna put a little drop. Whoop. Right. It's, you know, we we like to do these viewer suggestions and stuff because that's where a lot know. of great ideas come from. This should be a, a, a subsonic round. We'll see how that looks on our makeshift shadow graph setup here. A lot of people saw uh, Destin from Smarter Every Day's video on his Schlieren photography, which is awesome. And they're like, hey, you should do it too. So this, this is a simplified version. We're just filming the shadow, which uh, you need a, um, it's a lot simpler setup. So let's shoot that and see what kind of a cloud we get coming off of the slug. All right. Okay, everything okay. looks good. Level. Raise it a little more. Which way? Raise it up a little bit, about an inch. Overall? There you go, there you go. Should be pretty level. Yep, I'm ready. There we go. Now, I was surprised how much gases uh, seem to be blowing by the gas seal and come out before the slug and wad actually emerge. You can also see how quickly the wad separates from the slug within about a foot or a foot and a half after leaving the barrel. Considering the setup we were using, I think it's pretty cool. Okay, now we've got a supersonic one with the vape juice on it. A little awkward positioning here, but it's not too bad. Your level is good. I'm ready when you are. Woo! Yeah, that one about jumped out of my hands. Yeah. That yeah. Now we were burning 35 grains of long shot in these supersonic loads, but you could see why we weren't reaching that. We were losing a lot of, of gases past the gas seal. The wads I was using were probably designed for a, you know, 28 gram, you know, one ounce load or so, or they're just junk wads. I'm not sure. I haven't come to that conclusion yet. So it's really neat to see why we were not really hitting those supersonic speeds and just, you know, wasting so much energy. Coming up on Tau Flitter Mouse, Greg makes his return as launch director. The weather's been kind of funky and it's been hard to schedule a good sunny day. And the super exotics are back. Yes, the aero spikes. These are a totally different version made by Dr. Chris. What we got this time are some aluminum body with Russian APIs mounted them. It's going to be good, folks. Stand by. We'll be showing this in about a week after I get it edited. Thanks for watching. We hope you'll take the time to rate the video. Good or bad, it doesn't matter. If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, throw them down there, please. And finally, we want to thank our generous Patreon supporters.